Agriculture is the most fundamental and ancient activity that propelled human civilization as we know it today. Before agriculture, yeah, there were people, there were modern humans, but they formed groups of hunters and gatherers and they didn't build uh, cities, they didn't build empires. So agriculture is perceived by many as a very conservative uh, activity. However, it has been over the time characterized by a, a rate of innovation that was necessary uh, in order to uh, be able to feed the populations. And of course, uh, the rate of population uh, was, statistically speaking, exactly equal with the amount of calories that agriculture could produce at a given time. Because if you had more people and not enough calories, there would be starvation and death. This kind of cycle of uh, overshooting population that will then go back to the sustainable level has characterized human civilization for thousands of years, tens of thousands of years. Uh, and it was invisible to most unless they were the one starving. Uh, now we have a globally interconnected world and uh, we know when there is a food crisis somewhere and hopefully we intervene, we help, uh, we prevent uh, famine and starvation to kill people. Actually, agriculture now is powerful enough in its ability to create the output edible calories that when there is famine, it is not due to lack of food, it is due to uh, insufficient logistics or active uh, prevention of the population being fed by civil war and conflict or corruption. However, the way that agriculture arrived to the point where it is today must change. The impact of agriculture on the environment must um, be ameliorated, must be lightened. Uh, the pressure that humanity puts on the environment uh, is not compatible with uh, our future. I uh, was lucky to uh, participate in uh, the opening meeting uh, of a new think tank, the think tank Farm to Fork, that uh, was born uh, to catalyze the rate of innovation and the rate of technology adoption in agriculture, especially following uh, the European Union uh, common agriculture policy that is uh, uh, being uh, uh, put in place, in highlighting sustainability and highlighting biodiversity and uh, actually uh, very explicitly putting uh, in place uh, incentives and uh, objectives to uh, reach this in the way that uh, every kind of uh, activity uh, in agriculture and food production is going to be influenced by it over the course of the next five years. The policies that the European Union puts in place matter worldwide because of how big a market it uh, represents, both in terms of how it produces food to be consumed inside or for export or its import of uh, food from, from outside. And uh, the size of the market also makes it so that uh, the producers of uh, technologies and components uh, in uh, Europe uh, or outside of the Europe that serve the European market 
uh, are um, able to, to leverage that size in order to uh, achieve uh, both uh, their financial goals as well as to be able to develop uh, new products, new services that otherwise uh, wouldn't be available. So uh, just a few examples of the things that, uh, that we are seeing that uh, are not uh, only on the horizon but are already uh, in uh, agricultural practice today. The ability to plow at a depth that is much shallower than before in order not to disturb uh, uh, and not to diminish the fertility uh, of uh, the field. The simultaneous laying of uh, tubes underground at a depth that uh, is uh, deeper than, than the plowing depth uh, in order to irrigate the field uh, with uh, the right quantities of water enriched with the kind of nutrients that the particular plant needs exactly where uh, it is needed because of uh, both satellite-based and drone-based um, monitoring of plant growth through data analysis and uh, integration based on uh, multi-spectral imaging. The uh, opportunity uh, is uh, really enormous. Already the existing practices uh, can improve um, farm productivity uh, double digits, 10, 20 percent and more, while um, diminishing drastically uh, the use of water, uh, the um, uh, weight, uh, 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 the pressure of uh, food production on the fertility of the terrain, uh, and of course, um, quite substantially uh, diminishing also the use of uh, chemicals that, uh, that are um, the traditional uh, fertilizers or pesticides uh, which contributed uh, importantly in our ability to increase the level of food production we have today but uh, where uh, they are now being uh, um, labeled or recognized as uh, undesirable uh, beyond a certain necessary level. The next stages of agricultural revolution again will come from uh, technology. Imagine vertical farming uh, that uh, can be above ground or below ground uh, that uh, is proportional to the volume of uh, the uh, farm uh, rather than the area of the field available. Um, the availability of plant-based uh, meat substitutes uh, that are being uh, adopted and, and appreciated by consumers already uh, or actually um, cultivated meat of animal origin uh, obtained by cell cultures rather than uh, growing an entire traditional animal. These are just two examples, uh, but also advanced techniques like uh, CRISPR uh, in our ability to intervene uh, and uh, improve uh, the uh, basic uh, crops and, uh, and the basic ingredients uh, of our food chain. There are uh, obstacles. Uh, for example, in Italy today, you cannot apply uh, pesticides via drones, uh, which practice would be able to diminish the quantity um, put out uh, quite radically because flying a drone even if applied small quantities very precisely because it flies uh, a meter or two meters above ground is equated to uh, blasting the crops uh, uh, with traditional uh, spraying from planes and that is prohibited and as a consequence uh, the use of drones is also prohibited. 
or um, other examples where uh, the um, regulations uh, are not um, aligning the incentives in actually delivering the desired outcome. Large quantities of healthy food in great variety uh, with as little environmental pressure as possible across not only Europe, but the world. And then, of course, the most radical of uh, food production practices uh, are going to be on the Moon uh, and the Mars and the asteroid belt. Uh, environments uh, where, well, you cannot uh, grow corn or feed uh, a cow with uh, the corn that you grew. Uh, you cannot waste uh, water. You cannot uh, have almost any of the things that we are accustomed to have on Earth. The total, not only radical, but total sustainability practices that uh, Moon colonies and Mars colonies are going to have will be not only advanced, but very valuable. And Earth agriculture is going to be profoundly influenced by those practices that uh, Mars will be happy uh, to sell to Earth uh, and consult and advise on their implementation in the best possible way. The uh, agricultural sector uh, is uh, something that I am not very familiar with, uh, except uh, eating uh, food. Uh, and uh, for me, it was uh, a pleasure to start this collaboration with uh, Think Tank Farm to Fork. And uh, uh, I am looking forward uh, to the next meeting. I am looking forward uh, to interact both with uh, the providers of uh, these exciting, interesting, existing, already being deployed agricultural technologies, as well as uh, with uh, the, the farmers uh, that are uh, the heart uh, and, and uh, really the, the passion that they put in uh, their work uh, of uh, what uh, they produce uh, and uh, we eat. Thank you very much and uh, see you in the next uh, episode of The Context. <music>